Uh, next thing, so the wideband O2 sensor is another input that is, oh, sorry, it's a device. So I, I bought uh, Haltex, uh, their CAN unit wideband, uh, their wideband O2 sensor, or O2 um, wideband controller with O2 sensor. Now the one that I have in the GT4 swapped Celica is, uh, it's their older style. So it's harder to run a gauge off of it. I actually, I've got to age. I got to have to order a gauge. But you wire the gauge into the same output wires that come off of the uh, the wideband controller. Like now, so now the way they've done it with their newer ones, it's CAN based, and it actually has wires that go to the sensor, wires that come out to the gauge, and then it plugs into the uh, the Haltech engine management just through this little CAN plug. There's like a little plug that's just called CAN style control area network. Um, the can style adapter and it just you plug it into the wideband controller and then you just run a little wire over and plug it into the uh, <clears throat> plug it into the engine uh, the engine management and it's easy once you plug that in um, it automatically detects and it pops up and it brings you to this screen and it says hey you've just plugged in uh, a can device you know do you want to set it up and you'll walk through the whole setup process so it um, you'll select like what kind it is I think by default it might have this checked already, but if this one I have is a wideband single channel, um, it's their single channel controller. They have a dual channel one also, so if you have like left bank and right bank O2 sensors, um, wideband O2 sensors, then you can um, you can do that, and you can actually buy a dual gauge that has uh, the O2 sensor, like the um, the air the air fuel ratio measurement on top and then the air fuel ratio measurement on bottom for like you know once for left bank once for right bank so but I don't need that I just need a single channel um, so I have the single channel on this but that's not all after you check that box you gotta come over here to wideband devices and make sure WBI1 sensor 1 is selected and then O2 wideband 1 come on so you don't have to change anything here um, what you would do with this, like if you install a wideband O2 sensor that is not a Haltech, so this one everything is grayed out because they know like hey it's a Haltech device, we know what the voltages are, do not let the user change the halt change the Haltech values, but since it's this one, or if you install one that's not a Haltech um, pressure sensor, or pressure sensor, if you install one that's not a Haltech um, wideband O2 sensor, or controller, wideband controller, all that stuff, then the, the voltages might be different, like um, Innovate Motorsports, I think theirs is like nine point something uh, um, air fuel ratio to like 22, something like that. And then other ones, they might be from 10 to 20 air fuel ratio or AFR. Um, and that would be like, it's the same thing with the map sensor, like at 10, uh, at 10 AFR, you have zero volts. And at 20 AFR, you have, it's, you know, it's, it's outputting five volts. So if it's measuring about uh, 14 and a half air fuel ratio then it should you should see somewhere around two and a half volts so like usually whenever you get your air fuel ratio sensor the wideband controller all that stuff it'll come with a data sheet just like the map sensor did um, and you plug those numbers in here for your for your wideband controller so and since it's not a device you probably won't have this box checked you'll just go into straight into uh, You'll have it wired in through auxiliary wire harness, and uh, instead of going in through the CAN CAN controller port, unless it has a CAN port, so um, then you'll just change the voltages, and you, you should be able to start up the car and move. Um, now, if you notice, you're like you're saying like, wait, Jay, wait a second. I thought 14.7 to one was the the ideal air fuel ratio that you want to be at, and it is the ideal air fuel ratio you want to be at. But the problem with that and with turbocharged engines and mixing those two together, if I left this at 14.7 to one all the way across, yeah, it would be efficient, but it would be very hot. So my exhaust would be pretty hot going all the way up here to 20 psi and if you have that controlling like you have this exhaust that's spinning a little impeller and the turbo that uh, that heat plus the impeller is very damaging over a long period of time so one way to remedy that is to you change the air fuel ratio so you make it more rich all the way down to 
Um, I think like 11 is like a safe number. I, I've seen like on a dyno, if you do anything between 14.7 to 1 and 11 to 1, it's all right around the same power output. It, there's a minute difference, and the best power output is around like 13 and a half um, air fuel ratio. That's the best power output. The most efficient power output is around 16.1. The problem with 16.1, or sorry, 16, uh, around 16 to 1. The problem with around 16 to 1 air fuel ratio is it's even hotter, it puts out a lot more nitric oxides, and that's one of the things that makes it really hot is the more nitric oxides. Um, and the keeping exhaust cool and around 14.7 to 1 helps prevent it from uh, making more nitric oxides in the exhaust. So one of the ways they do that from the factory is by having an EGR valve in the car, which by the way, you don't want to take off unless you're running an engine management. Um, if you're running engine management, there's usually not a way for you to configure an EGR valve. EGR is exhaust gas recirculation and really quick, all it does is just take like a little bit of exhaust gases that have already been burned up and it recycles those back into the engine. I've heard a lot of people say like, well it's just, it's, it's because you have to burn up the fuel that wasn't burned up before. Well, no, it doesn't do that. There's not like a little catchment thing, you know, where it catches only the unburnt fuel and it pipes it back into the engine. It just catches random exhaust and it cycles that back into the engine as filler pretty much. So you would have like 95% regular oxygen and fuel uh, mixing together and then probably like 5% or so of um, exhaust gases. That exhaust gases, when it's used as a filler in the combustion chamber, it lowers the temperature um, coming out of the exhaust pipe. So when that temperature is lowered, the, um, what you have is uh, less nitric oxides being produced in the car. Now, um, on the other end of the scale, when you get more to like to um, air fuel ratio that's more rich, on the uh, so it's a little bit more richer than 14.7 to 1, so if it's around like these numbers, like 13, to 1, 12.9 to 1, 12.2, like that. as it gets more rich, there's more hydrocarbons that are produced in the um, in the exhaust, which are also bad. So the best air fuel ratio that you can have is this 14.7 to 1. And then as this gets more rich, um, power output doesn't change, efficiency changes. You're you're gonna have uh, well, I guess power output does change minutely, really very small, um, but it does change a little bit. It doesn't change that much to where it's worth damaging a turbo, pretty much, by running too, running your exhaust too hot. So, 13.7 uh, to 1, you know, you get down, it gets more and more rich. You don't really want to go below 10. Um, you can, um, but I, I really wouldn't like to go below 11 because I know that's the ideal. But if it's, hey, if it's, if it saves my turbo, then that's perfect. You know, I'll, I'll go, I'll go below 11 all day. So. Um, so anyway, that's the reason why you have all of these. So as the car is boosting more, and you're putting more and more power, you're delivering more and more power to the wheels, and your exhaust is getting hotter and hotter, uh, you want to have your air fuel ratio get more and more rich. Um, if you're running a non-turbo car, and you say you have like a really strong um, exhaust manifold, I guess you can run it hot, and you know, you could have burnt valves, you can run it uh, like 16 to 1, something like that, if you want to have a really good power output. Um, and you don't care about the environment. Um, but 14.7 is ideal. And anything between about 11 and 14.7, um, those are the best air fuel ratios that you want to work with.